In today's video, we'll see how to implement slowly changing dimension in Talon using TMAP. So we have inbuilt component TSD, uh, but we'll see how to implement the SED type 2 in Talon using TMAP. So in general, we have uh, three types of SEDs, SED 1, 2 and 3. So in SED 1, it will just override all the changes. Only the transactional data will be present in the data warehouse. So that is normal truncate and load. And the second one is SED type 2. All the historical data will be added. So the historical record, every time when you make an update to the transaction database, that history will be maintained in your data warehouse. So that is called as SED type 2. And in SED type 3, only the previous changes will be updated. So instead of new row, a new column will be added. So the previous changes will be added in the SED type 3. But for today's concept, we'll focus on the SED type and how to implement that. And this is also one of the frequently asked interview question. How to implement SED type 2 in talent without the inbuilt component. So if you see SED type, like we have two operations. The first one is insert and update. So when, if it is a new record, only insert will happen. So whenever there is an update to the existing record. So that time what it will do is, we'll update the old record as inactive and also we'll insert a new record and that will make it as an active record and to implement SED type 2 the data type or the table will have three more additional columns that is start date, end date and active column so if you see here this is the transactional database source table so we have player ID, player name and team the second below screenshot is from the data warehouse table structure so we'll have all the column names from table uh, from the transactional database but we'll have uh, four additional columns one is the surrogate key this is a unique key whenever a record getting inserted in the data warehouse uh, surrogate key will be generated and it's, this is a unique key so to uniquely identify a record in the data warehouse so we can call it as a primary key used in the data warehousing so for the transactional database we call primary key and for the data warehouse, we call a surrogate key. And along with that, we also have three more additional columns, start date, end date, and active column. If you see here, uh, player number Uraj. So we are taking the IPL scenario. So whenever a player is getting changed to multiple teams, so we'll just maintain this tree. So if you see here, uh, first Uraj was in, I mean, just, just an example, so not accurate data. So we have uh, four records. But if you see in the transactional data warehouse, so in transaction DB we have four records. In the data warehouse we have six records, which means we are maintaining all the history. So Euraj had changed multiple teams, like earlier he was in Bangalore, then Punjab, then Mumbai. So if you see here, start date is when he started, uh, when he jo joined the team, and ended when he left the team, and also an active flag to indicate that whether it's currently part of which team. So this is the table structure and coming to the talent flow, we'll have, this is the flow, we'll have three uh, output columns. So the source table and we do a lookup to the data warehouse table to decide which is update or insert and three output rows, one for the insert and the second one for update and third one for insert update. Now let's see how to implement this using talent. So before going for the TMAP concept, let's see what is the inbuilt component in talent. So we have SED component and if you see here, due to some performance issues, we'll be not using, we'll not go for the inbuilt component component in real-time scenarios and also will not, will not have that much flexibilities when compared to TMAP. So we'll just make use of existing connection and here we have this SED editor. So here we have all the uh, fields, type 0, type 1, type 2, and also we, are, we discussed right, like additional columns, start date, end date, and also the sequence, the surrogate key, how to get the surrog surrogate key. So this is the SED editor of the inbuilt component. And if you see the job design, in the T pre job we have the DB connection, and in the post job we are committing all the transaction and also we are closing it and coming to the main job design 
in the source table we are reading all the columns like player id player name and team from sd2 so here sd2 is my transactional table and sd2 underscore dw is my data warehouse table okay so i'll just truncate all the tables and we'll start from fresh so now if you see there are no records in my transactional table as well as in the data warehouse table so first we'll insert two records uh, we'll take a uh, dhoni and hardik pandya's example so dhoni is part of chennai team and hardik pandya in previous ipl he was part of mumbai team so we'll insert two records two records are inserted uh, we'll commit the transaction so in sd we have two records and in the data warehouse no records now let's run the job to see how this is getting populated yeah the job is completed now let's go back and see the sd2 data warehouse table so here we have two records so i'll just well, close all the outputs. So I'll pin this output, and in data warehouse table we have two records. So if you see here, like player ID seven, Dhoni, and all the columns were populated along with that start date. So whenever end date is null, it will be an active record. Additionally, we are also using this active flag. This is optional. It depends upon the project requirement if we can include this column or not. So using these two columns, we can know that whether part of which team they are, if the record is active or not. So now, now what happened is now along with Dhoni, so Dhoni will be part of Chennai team, but Hardik moved to Gujarat team. Now let's update Hardik Pandit's record team from Mumbai to Gujarat. So record is updated and if you see in the transactional tb only we'll have two records and team got changed from mumbai to gujarat now if you run the job so the first one is insert so now what happened is uh, the insert row will be zero records and in update we'll have one one rows here in the in the insert flow zero records went and in the update records one row for the update and one row for the insert so now let's see the output so here like Adik Pandya's record earlier is for US part of Mumbai team and if you see the Mumbai record we got an end date and the active flag is in so it's not part of Mumbai team and his current team is Gujarat this is the current record and again uh, this is the start date and end date nl See, since like we're running the job on the same day so these are dates are same for both start date and end date if we run on different days these dates will get changed and we can easily identify and suppose if again if Hardik Pandey is changing from Gujarat to Bangalore let's see like we'll have one more record in the data warehouse table so one row updated I'm committing the transaction again so since it's an update scenario uh, zero rows went to the insert and one one row went to the update and in update insert again if you see the transactional table it will be only two records Hardik Pandya's Bangalore uh, this is the main advantage of of the slowly changing dimension we can just track all the changes since if you see here Hardik Pandya earlier he was part of Mumbai team and uh, Gujarat team and the current record is Bangalore and also we can conclude one more column like version number so if you want to 
maintain one more changes to see which was the first team and second team and current team so if we include version number mumbai will be like version 1 and gujarat will be number 2 and bangalore will be the active record we can maintain that column also like version number we can auto increment that value so this is sed2 but let's see what are the logics implemented in the team app so this is source table we read all the columns and in the lookup table we mainly capture the surrogate key we pull surrogate key player id and the team name from the data warehouse table so this lookup is from the data warehouse table the second table where we have the start date and end date and active column so the logic what we implemented is so the player id so this player id from the table one wait let me close all this So I'll take the player ID from the source table and I'll do a compare. First we'll do a left out a join on the player ID from the data warehouse table. So we are using we are using the left outer join and we join for the insert scenario. So what we'll do is if this player matches this player from the data warehouse table, it's an update. So we just kept the condition if the player one equals player two and we put in a not condition. If it's not part of the player 2, if it's not part of the data virus table, then it's an insert scenario. So just we're putting not operation here. If the player 1 equals player 1 does not equals, which means insert scenario, which means the record does not exist in the data virus table. So this will play an insert. So here we are the start date, we are putting the system date and an active flag Y and end date we're keep keeping it as null. And for the update scenario, we are just putting equals. If the player one equals player two, which means this row number, player number seven, record if it's present here, which means it's an update. And along with that, we are also checking one more condition. So we, are, we have implemented a series two based on the team column. So here, if this team, if this team column, if bank Chennai matches Chennai, it should not match that which if it matches then there is no update to the current record so for Dhoni always Chennai will match with Chennai record so which means no uh, no changes but if you see Hadik Pandya's changes was happened is so now currently we'll try to match Bangalore if it getting updated to Delhi so Delhi will try to match with Delhi here so if there is no Delhi here which means it's an update scenario so player ID is already present but the team is not equals to the data warehousing. So I just mentioned wait. So here we updated Delhi. So this what we'll do is player ID 33 matches with the data warehouse 33 row. And Delhi will not match with the Delhi because we do not have any Delhi row in the data warehouse. So when you run that, uh, when you do that, it will be an update here. And also the same condition will go for the insert scenario. In the update, we are putting an end date here and active flag is null uh, n. With the same condition, we are inserting a new record, which means whenever there is an update, we also need to insert a new record here. So in the insert scenario, we are putting the start date and end date as null and y flag. For the update scenario, uh, we are using the surrogate key. So based on the surrogate key, uh, we are deciding that's an update condition. It should update to the particular row. So on the action on table for the first uh, will be an insert. And for sec second thing, it will be an update. And for the third table, again, it will be an insert. Now let's try with a few more examples, one with update. So now Adik Pandya's record is, is an update scenario. Now let's try to insert one more record like Sachin. So now in the SED2, in the transactional table, we have three records. One for Dhoni, one for Hadik Pandya, and one for Sachin. Now if you run the job, so what it should do is uh, one flow should go to the 
insert and remaining two row remaining row should go for the update okay i think we did not commit the transactions okay one minute Yes, yeah, see one row for the insert and the main row when it came for the update scenario. Now let's check the data warehouse table. So if you see like Ardik Pandya, like we had four updates. So now the current team is Delhi. So the remaining three records went for uh, inactive status and we also have an end date. And this is the present record and also the new record Sachin has got inserted. Yes, thank you.